the, the first gig we ever played was at the Hughes Aircraft where Ray's mom worked. We got the gig, I think it was uh, for either Christmas or Thanksgiving kind of party they had. It, you know, we had to play like jazz standards and stuff like that. And uh, Jim had never, we'd never actually done a gig before. Somehow we got through the gig. It was, uh, it was actually fun. Go play high schools, you know, little gigs, private parties, get $20 and split it four ways. After a year and a half of rehearsing in the garage in Venice, we got a gig at the London Fog. The London Fog was a tiny little hole in the wall on the Sunset Strip. Legendary Doors gig. It's absolutely legendary. Ray just asked all his old film school buddies to come out with their girlfriends and friends so that at least their opening night there would be packed. And we packed it with our friends and got the gig and then no one was there the next night. On Certain. the billboard, what did it say? The billboard was hysterical. It was hand-painted on a sheet. Right. <laughs> they had it suspended from a pole, and it said, The Doors. Banned from Venice. Banned from Venice. What else is there to say? <laughs> There's nothing else to say about them. This is their first gig. Was uh, it B-A-N-N-E-D or? No, no, hardly. Yeah, right. It's what, yeah. Wouldn't that have been great? Banned. 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 You can't play in Venice. Yeah. No, anything went in Venice. You go from uh, London the London Fog, Fog to the Whiskey. Whiskey a go go. Ronnie Heron uh, booked us into the Whiskey a go go. And uh, thank God she came by, man. Yeah, she came down to London Fog and saw us there. Immediately fell in love with Jim. And a couple weeks later, we were playing at the Whiskey. She said, How would you guys like to be the house band at the Whiskey a go go? The three of us go, uh, <laughs> Yes! And Jim says, Hold on. He said, we got to think about it. Why don't you come back in a day or two and we'll give you the answer. <laughs> she leaves. We attack Morrison. <laughs> well, you, God damn it. I think we were even getting fired from the London Fog. I don't, you know, it was like really <laughs> serendipity. The better angels of ourselves had brought her in. Come on in, you got to see this band. You're going to love the lead singer. So we start pummeling Morrison on the arm. And, and, and I said to him, we need the, the whiskey, that's the whiskey a go go. She wants us to be the opening act, the house band. Play. We play one, one set, the headliner plays. We play and change the house, we play another set, and the headliner plays. And we plays. get paid. And know. we get paid union money. Uh, we were getting like 10 bucks a night. Five. Un five. 10 bucks on weekend. Mm, 750. <laughs> so Morrison says, you don't want to appear too anxious. He said, I know we need the gig. We'll take the gig. But you don't want to appear too anxious. Two days later, she comes back, and Jim says, yeah, we talked it over. We'll, we'll take the gig. Boom. A week or two later, we were uh, at the Whiskey A Go-Go. And the headliner for our first week there was... Well, didn't he tell it? Well, we have to look through our schedule. <laughs> <laughs> But we can probably do it. We'll probably fit it in here because our schedule is empty for the next 20 years. We have nothing. The, o the act that we opened for was uh, Van Morrison. Well, Jim the, Morrison they, uh, and Van Morrison. They were called them, of them. course. We were called the Doors. But Van Morrison and Jim Morrison were on the same stage. And at our last uh, set, we all jammed together at the same time. Played Gloria. Ah, Morrison and Morrison doing Gloria. Man, oh man. Uh, the next time I saw them, they were at, I believe it was Andine's in New York City. And I noticed an enormous change in Morrison. I mean, he had developed to his stage presence. Uh, he was um, really a performer by then. Uh, initially, I just thought, this guy's not going to make it as a performer. I, you know, he just seems too shy. He mostly kept his back to the audience and really didn't, uh, you know, do that performer thing by of engaging the audience. And then Jim gradually get the courage to turn around and face the audience. And uh, at first I thought, God, he's so introspective. He's just like fooling with the mic cord and doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm a professional. I've been playing weddings and bar mitzvahs forever, you know. I didn't, at the time I didn't know that he was kind of finding his own. He wasn't gonna imitate James Brown like some other singers. He was gonna, find his snakeskin uniqueness and uh, that gradually evolved. Fillmore was good. 
God, the Fillmore. Wow, was that fun. And the, the early um, gigs like that, that sort of maybe second bill in a concert hall, just making the jump from clubs, I would say for me, that's, that was the most exciting time um, because all this work we did was going to happen. Oh, my God, this train's leaving the station. This is going to go, maybe. I mean, the, oh, the high from that is fantastic. Let's get to the records. Let's all right, you got let's see some collection. vinyl. Yeah. Let's see some vinyl. Ah, let me tell you about this one. This is the one yeah. when I realized that these are now acid heads. Right. I happen to be myself on a psychedelic substance. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, groovy. We went over to someone's house, and I'm just going, whoa, whoa. And I said, oh, a new Beatles album, man, let me see it. And they showed me this, and I went, boing, because you could look into their eyes, and you knew these fellows had all ingested LSD. Booby. Time to live, time to lie, time to laugh, time to die. Yeah. 